In a recent article from Total Film, some small but interesting new tidbits about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes were revealed, and I wanted to break it down and give my thoughts. If you like what I do here and want to show your support, be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. Enjoy the video. and welcome back to Ape Nation, your number one source for all things Planet of the Apes on YouTube. My name is Josh, and late last week in the latest issue of Total Film Magazine, some new info dropped regarding Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Please note, while I do not personally consider any of what I'm about to talk about as a spoiler for the movie, other fans consider some of these details to be mild spoilers, so feel free to proceed with caution. So for most of these article breakdown videos, what I'll usually do is read the entire thing and then pull out all the highlights to talk about them. I'm not going to do that with this one, mainly just because there's not a whole lot of new information that we didn't already know and what there is, it's very small. And also the article's kind of long and a lot of it's just a lot of tech talk and going into some of the descriptions of certain things. So it's not a whole lot of stuff to really dive into. So I'm just going to talk about the things that I took away from it. If you would like to read the full article, I will post a link down in the description of this video. So the first thing that caught my eye, and I think there were a lot of reports posting this specific element of the article around last week when it got published, is this quote about Noah. He's a new character we can identify with, appreciate, respect, because he's incredibly kind and nice. But he's going to undergo this great transformation, or at least the beginnings of one in this movie, where the innocence is robbed of him a little bit. And he's referred to as the archetype of characters like Luke Skywalker and Frodo Baggins. Again, this isn't really anything new that we haven't heard before. We've kind of heard that Noah is this hero's journey type of character, very similar to someone like Harry Potter or Luke Skywalker or Frodo Baggins, you know, anyone going on that hero's journey. I did think the comparison to Luke Skywalker was interesting specifically. Mainly, it just feeds that whole, is he actually related to someone, specifically Caesar, narrative. I'm still convinced that he's probably going to end up being a nobody, but that whole aspect of it does make me wonder but then again it could have just been worded like that in the article i'm not sure if someone on the film actually said that or if it was just the article taking what they were saying and going with it in that direction but i did think it was worth noting the next little thing that i wanted to talk about is about noah's tribe noah's clan so noah's from a village that is called the eagle clan i think this is something that we found out a while ago but i'm not 100 percent sure but it does make sense that they are called the eagle clan since a lot of them seem to have pet eagles it seems like it's kind of their thing there and another quote about the eagle clan they keep to themselves it's an isolationist society it's a small village but they have a territory and noah isn't allowed outside that territory the majority of the clan are kept within the boundaries noah's clansmen are ignorant about the world outside knowing nothing of caesar or where apes came from so i think this is really really cool and i like that this is the approach that they're taking when it comes to where noah comes from and how noah is raised in his environment he doesn't come from some big city. He doesn't come from some tribe or clan that is super knowledgeable. He comes from a much smaller, much more relaxed or isolated away from the rest of the world, a little tribe that just does their own thing. They're just doing their day to day, at least from what it seems like in all the trailers and everything. And the fact that not just Noah, but his entire tribe doesn't know anything about Caesar or where apes came from. I think that's just going to continue to play into this journey that we're going to go on with Noah and him discovering things. And I think it's cool that we're going to kind of discover things with him. We're going to discover things that we kind of already know, but we might discover some other things that come along with that. And that's, what I think, what I'm really excited to find out is what are the things that Noah is going to discover along this journey, along with the history of apes, along with how Caesar came to be and where all that started. I think he's obviously going to find out about that, how it relates to him, what comes of it, where it goes from there. That's what I'm really excited to find out. But on top of that, I'm really excited to find out what additional information have we been missing? There's obviously some puzzle pieces about down fall of humanity and rise of apes to where we are now. And I definitely think there are some puzzle pieces that were missing. So I'm very curious to see what those are. And I think that's going to be part of this journey. And then continuing off of something about the Eagle Clan is where they go and where they're not allowed to go. And one of those places they're not allowed to go is something called the Forbidden Zone. You never told me. Why do you call this a Forbidden Zone? No one knows. It's an ancient taboo set forth in the sacred scrolls. The lawgiver pronounced this whole area deadly. 
for those obviously who have seen the original films, you know what the Forbidden Zone is. It's a very iconic part of the original movie. But for those who do not know, the Forbidden Zone is an area in the original Planet of the Apes film that was sanctioned off from all other apes. They were not allowed to go there. And it was kept forbidden to preserve the sanctity of ape knowledge. It was kept there because what was in the Forbidden Zone was the remains of human society from 2000 years in the past. And it was kept forbidden to prevent other apes from discovering the truth and discovering what actually happened and where they actually came from. And so I'm very curious to see where they're going to take the Forbidden Zone in this movie. I'm curious where it actually is going to be located, what they're going to discover there. Is it going to be similar to the Forbidden Zone from the original movie, or is it going to be a new kind of take on it? What is it actually going to be? And a direct quote from production designer Daniel D. Torrance is actually talking about a specific filming location that plays a pivotal role in the movie. They didn't mention exactly what place in the movie it is, but they just mentioned it's a location that plays a pivotal role. And speaking on that location, they said it became the border between the Eagle Clan village and the Forbidden Zone, which is where Noah is told you never go. And so I'm curious about what that actual location is, what role it plays in the movie. But again, I'm really fascinated by where they're going with the Forbidden Zone here. I think it's really, really exciting that they're continuing to pull those elements of the original movie, pull those names, pull those references, and find ways to utilize them for this new world, for this new story that they're telling. I really, really love how they've continued to do that. They did it in the first three movies. They're going to continue to do it in this one. And so I really, really love their approach in that regard. And then speaking on Noah from Owen Teague, who plays the character, the thing that drives him in this story is saving his people to see what's out there, which is something that his father isn't really eager for him to do. And this is a bit of an extension on what we've already known and what we've already seen now in the trailer and what we saw in the most recent trailer. I mean, this is one of those things that I think some people are considering a bit of a spoiler. To me, this isn't a spoiler at all to know what the actual motivation for Noah going on this journey is. That's something we're going to find out in the first 30 minutes of the movie. To me, that's not a spoiler. But as we see in the trailer, we see an attack on Noah's village. We see that for some reason or another, Noah has to save his people. And in that process, he wants to learn more about what's out there in the world. And knowing that his father, which I would assume is Koro, the elder ape that we've seen in a couple of pictures, I don't know if that's his father or if that's just like an old wise character that plays like a mentor role to him, but Noah having that father figure that wants to keep him restrained and keep him where he is and doesn't want him to explore outside of the boundaries. It's a bit of a trope in these kind of movies, but as long as it's executed well, and as long as the characters and the character dynamics work well, I'm all for it. I think that sounds like a really fitting part of this story. And then finally, the one other bit of information that I wanted to delve into. And I talked a little bit about this in my trailer video that came out a couple days ago when I was talking about the new trailer and the tickets going on sale is talking about Freya Allen's character. So as you all know, I have been referring to this character as May for the last several months. And that is because when the first trailer came out, she was reported as being called May from multiple Hollywood outlets, as well as Freya Allen herself, who when she posted a picture of her, she referred to her as May. And only a few weeks or months later, went back and changed that caption to say Nova. I ignored it at first just because I thought, oh, well, I, I don't really know what's going on. All I know is officially it was referred to as May. And then we got more promotion over the next couple months where she continued to be referred to as May. But then we also had some things referring to her as Nova. So we had mixed information here. Well, according to this article, Nova is a name apes have adopted for humans hence its reputation through the franchise. Noah also calls her Echo. So we now have three names for this character, May, Nova, and Echo. Now, I said this a little bit in my video the other day, but I'll expand it on a bit here. My theory for this whole situation, and I could be completely wrong, which there's a good chance I am completely wrong, is that May is her actual name, but it was never supposed to be revealed that her name was May. And so for some reason, the name May got out when the first trailer came out, not sure how, my guess is that was not supposed to be revealed back in November all the way to this point, and she was supposed to be called Nova. So my guess is that she is called Nova throughout the beginning of the movie, and then at some point, it's revealed that her actual name is May. Now, whether it's her finally talking and saying her name is May, whether it's they get to some place and they find some sort of information that reveals what her name is or something along those lines, that is my theory as to how this whole situation is going to play out and why there are two different names for her and why two different names got reported for her. That is my only major assumption. The 
other guess I have, which could also be possible, is they just changed her name at some point during production and information got mixed up and she's Nova now. We're not going to know officially until the movie's actually out, but that is also possible that May is just not even a thing and she is just called Nova. As for Echo, my guess is since she is called Nova in the beginning of the movie, as we've seen in the clip that came out a few days ago in the first half of that trailer, she is referred to as Nova, which it says here, Nova is a name that apes have adopted for humans, so Noah is calling her Nova at the beginning of the movie. My guess is at some point he decides he doesn't want to call her Nova, he's going to give her a nickname, so he calls her Echo. Why? I don't know. We'll find out when we see the movie, but that's my assumption as to how that plays out. And then maybe even further on in the movie, we get the actual reveal that her name is May. Unless, of course, May is not even a name. So that's what I have to say about the May slash Nova slash Echo character played by Freya Allen. It's completely up in the air right now what her actual name is, whether May is her real name or May is a fake name and that's completely out the window. Maybe her actual name is Echo. I don't know for sure, but it is interesting and it's a little bit confusing, but it's all going to be cleared up, I'm assuming, once we see the movie when it comes out in just over five weeks from now which is crazy to think about that this movie is so close at this point. I like all the information we're getting here. I don't think it's anything super crazy. A lot of stuff we've kind of heard bits and pieces of before, but I just wanted to get into it because I know a lot of people were talking about it and I wanted to give some of my thoughts. So that is all I have to say on all of this stuff, guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I want to know what you think about the Nova slash May situation. I want to know what you think about the Eagle Clan, the Forbidden Zone, all of that stuff. I'm really excited to talk about it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out today's video video here on Ape Nation. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. I'll catch you in the next one, so until then, goodbye.